I would like to show and discuss a demonstration that I think is not very well known, but it has a lot of physics in it. Here's the apparatus. We have these two pendulums here, same length, um, same masses. Uh, I've checked that they have the same masses and the same diameters. They're billiard balls. And what I'm going to do is pull these aside, and I'm going, to give, I'm going to give one of the balls a velocity such that it has a head-on collision with the other ball. Just before that collision, I'll release this ball. Okay? And I'm also going to give it a speed such that it goes in approximately uniform, so it would go in uniform circular motion if it didn't hit the other ball. Okay, so let's look at the demonstration here. Here we go. It's kind of surprising. The motion repeats, right? So that's what we want to understand. Why does it repeat? Here's a top view of the situation. So here's equilibrium is down here. When they're side by side and not moving, this is equal, the equilibrium location. The incident ball comes in here and hits the target ball. We have equal massive collisions that are elastic and, and they're in one dimension. So it's well known that what happens here is that um, with the target ball initially at rest, this, one will, this ball will, become momentar will momentarily come to rest, and this ball will have the initial velocity that the other ball has. So this is this standard situation, equal massive elastic collisions in one dimension where you have this. So this is going to move. Um, because it has the same velocity as the other one in a, in a semicircle here. That's called a conical pendulum. Um, looks something like this, okay? It's called a conical pendulum because the cord traces out a cone. So just after the, after the collision, this becomes a conical pendulum. What does this become? Well, it's going to be a planar pendulum. It's like this, and it's going to swing through equilibrium and come to the other side. They both go to the other side. And what we see in the demonstration is they both reach the opposite side at the same time. And that's critical because if they didn't reach at the same time, we wouldn't have a head-on collision and the motion would not repeat. So what we need to explain here is why they reach the other side at the same time. And one way of appreciating this is to realize that a conical pendulum, the motion of a conical pendulum, can be expressed as a superposition or sum of planar pendulum motions. So here again is a top diagram. <clears throat> Here's our conical pendulum going around like this. This is the mass. It's going around at some frequency. We can represent this motion as the sum of a planar pendulum in the x direction and a planar pendulum in the y direction. Um, you can see here that um, this is at small amplitudes, so the motion will be simple harmonic. Here's the X pendulum. It has an amplitude. And the, these planar pendulums have the same length as the conical pendulum. So if we add these two motions together, the X pendulum and the Y pendulum, with equal amplitudes, and with a 90 degree phase difference here, we can um, represent this motion. Here's the mathematical um, representation of the, the superposition. So the position of the mass undergoing uniform circular motion is given by, here's the X pendulum motion and here's the Y pendulum motion. So given this, the time it takes, let's say, for the conical pendulum mass to go from here to here is going to be the same as the time it takes the planar pendulum mass to go to here. Because the planar pendulum is just the x projection. The x projection of the conical motion is the x planar pendulum. So this explains why they both reach the bottom at the same time, and therefore they repeat. Okay, well, this accounts for the, the basic motion, but there are more questions here. <clears throat> and the first one I'd like to address is, I'm only giving roughly an initial velocity that gives uniform circular motion, right? 
what's the effect of that? The fact that it's not going to be precisely uniform circular motion if there's no collision. Well, let's see. I'm going to give it a greater velocity, roughly twice. Let me do it again with more greater velocity. There we go. Well, it re the motion repeats. Evidently, you don't have to have circular motion. So how do we explain that? Well, it's not difficult. Back, going back to our diagram here. Um, when we superpose the planar, mission, the planar motion, planar pendulum motion in the x direction and the y direction, we had equal amplitudes before in order to get the uniform circular motion. We don't have to have equal amplitudes. We can double this amplitude. The effect that's going to have is that this will now, the uh, pendulum will look like this, okay? The motion will look like this, but nothing stops us from doing that. And because we still have simple harmonic motion in these two directions for small amplitudes, it's going to take the same time for the, for the pendulum to go like this. It's going to take the same time for the uh, planar motion here. Again, because this is just the x pre projection. Um, so looking, here's our representation. We can simply double that. And you can easily show from here that the trajectory is an ellipse in this case. So we don't have to have a circular motion. It can be elliptical. Uh, OK. There's more. Um, damping. This motion is not going to keep going on forever, is it? Eventually, these pendulums are going to come to rest because we're slowly losing energy. How does the system come to rest? Does it keep doing its periodic motion here, um, where it interchanges between a planar pendulum and a conical pendulum, um, and it just slowly decays? Well, that's a reasonable hypothesis. Right? Let's see if it works. So I'm going to redo the demonstration. And we're going to wait a longer time now. So it's not looking too bad, but if you look carefully, you'll start to, now it's even more apparent. It's not precisely this. There is this element in here, but there's this kind of overall circular motion. So our hypothesis was wrong. So what's going on here? Well, we can better see what's going on if we look at one-dimensional collisions. I'm just going to simply take this, have this at rest, and let this one collide with it. Uh, that wasn't head on. It's supposed to go like, the motion's supposed to go like this, right? For perfectly elastic collisions. They're not perfectly elastic. And you can see that what's happening is, what's happened here is that in the first collision, this is not perfectly at rest. It's following. The motion is following a little because of a weak inelasticity. And we can understand that by looking at two extreme cases here. For perfectly elastic case, it'll look like this, okay? For perfectly inelastic, the two balls will stick together, and it looks like that. In between, it's reasonable that this one's going to follow that one, and that's exactly what we see here. So this following motion is, accumulates. It keeps going on, and it degrades the motion here, such that in the end, they're going to be moving, um, they're going to be moving together. I have to wait a little long for it, but eventually they will be touching and they'll be moving back and forth. And similar behavior occurs in the two-dimensional case. Uh, okay, there's one more interesting aspect of this demonstration. This superposition here, see this simple harmonic motion? Only for small amplitudes. A pendulum is simple harmonic, only for small amplitudes. So the question is, what happens at bigger amplitudes? Well, let's see. I'm going to go out here about 45 degrees. And I've got to give it a bigger velocity now, so it goes you know, roughly a circle.
Well, it's not repeating, is it? Let me do it again. It's not repeating, and the motion is complicated. Oh, it's going into this winding motion. One more time. Okay, I lied. One more time. <laughs> there. We are getting a lot of collisions now. Now, not only does the motion not repeat, it's complicated. And I've done this many times. It's different every time. And I'll talk a little more about that in a moment. But I want to first say that there are two things that are responsible for this lack of repetition and the complicated motion. The first one is that we're now, we don't have small amplitude here anymore. We have big amplitude here. If we look at the planar pendulum at big amplitude, the, um, the motion is not simple harmonic. It's only at small amplitudes here do we get, to a good approximation, simple harmonic motion. In that case, the period does not depend upon the amplitude. But out here, Hooke's law breaks down. We have Hooke's law here, approximately. It breaks down significantly when we get out here. We can appreciate this by going to an extreme case, the extreme case, of where it has almost 180 degree initial amplitude. If I release a pendulum from rest here, it's going to spend a lot of time at the top and then swing down, come back up, and then spend a lot of time before it comes momentarily to rest. So the period is clearly going to be bigger for this motion compared to this motion down here. And it's reasonable. Um, that in between, at intermediate amplitudes, the period's going to be greater. And you can prove this. It takes a little bit of effort, but you can prove it mathematically. So in our diagram here, now considering finite amplitude, this motion right here is going to take longer for the pendulum. For this mass to go from here to here, it's going to take a longer time. What about the conical pendulum? Well, the conical p pendulum has a period that's independent of amplitude, again, only for small amplitudes, because it's a superposition, you can think of it that way, of planar pendulums. What happens out here, like this? Well, again, let's go to an extreme case. The extreme case here is an amplitude of 90 degrees. So let's suppose we have a conical pendulum. The angle here is almost 90 degrees. What, what's the period in that case? Well, you can solve it, but we can also just argue qualitatively here. So let's look at this diagram here. The mass is going in a horizontal plane. This component of the tension here, this component of the tension has to balance the weight so that the motion stays in a horizontal plane. And you can see here, as this angle gets closer and closer to 90, this angle right here gets closer and closer to 90 degrees, to have a component of the tension cancel the weight, the tension has to become bigger and bigger. At an amplitude of 90 degrees, the tension would be infinite. That means um, it would be moving with uh, infinite speed, which is zero period. So here's what we've concluded. When we go to, at small amplitudes, they both reach the opposite side at the same time. At bigger amplitudes, the planar pendulum here takes um, a longer time. The conical pendulum takes a shorter time. So they're not going to have a head-on collision, so they won't repeat. So that's one effect, right? Um, there's another one. And you actually kind of already saw this, OK? The motion, when you get out here, it becomes very, at bigger amplitudes, it becomes very sensitive to whether to the nature of the collision, whether it's a head-on collision or slightly off. I can't arrange to have a perfectly head-on collision here. It's always going to be a little bit different every time I do that. That little bit of difference there has a big effect downstream in the motion. This is famous. It has a name. It's called sensitivity to initial conditions. And it is the hallmark of chaos. So I strongly suspect that our system here 
at, at, at higher amplitudes here is chaotic. And it looks like it's chaotic. It's erratic motion. Well, that was a poor, that wasn't sufficiently hit on. Okay. So uh, to conclude, we've looked at uh, two-dimensional collisions of uh, two identical pendulums. Uh, the small amplitude motion repeats, and we can uh, appreciate why it's doing that, because we can consider a conical pendulum to be a superposition of two planar pendulums, an X and a Y. Okay. Um, and it doesn't have to be um, a circle, and it works. The, the motion will repeat. They get, to, they get to it here at the same time for the elliptical case, too. Um, the fact that the collisions aren't perfectly elastic, we're losing a little bit of energy due there. That degrades the motion, causes it to eventually go in a circle like that. And finally, at higher amplitudes, due to a breakdown of Hooke's law, and also sensitivity to initial conditions. The motion does not repeat, dramatically does not repeat, and it's probably because it's chaotic. Thank you for watching.